This is an African fat-tailed gecko, and this is a leopard gecko. And if you've ever asked a forum what's the difference between the two, you've probably got a pretty aggressive answer. So today, I'm going to tell you why they're so darn similar, but the few things that are actually different about them. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between an African fat-tail and a leopard gecko, and which might be best for you. I'm Adam, this is Diglett, this is Littlefoot, <laughs> you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So one difference I've never really noticed until like I look at them side by side is Diglett, the African fat tail, looks a little bit more like uh, like a dinosaur. So for this video, let's go over the scientific reasons that they're different, and then we'll compare the two to see which one would be a better pet for you. So first of all, the range is very different. Uh, leopard geckos are from places like Iraq, Afghanistan, parts of northern India, where African fat tail geckos are from Africa. There are three main differences, and we'll go over them. I guess the first one is, I mean, their range, which we just kind of went over. Uh, number two is just a little bit of structural changes or differences between the two. Uh, the eyes of an African fat tail gecko and a leopard gecko are completely different, and uh, well, the, the feet are a little bit more sturdy on an African fat tail, and the African fat tail has a shorter tail. So they do look a little bit different, although very darn similar. Now let's talk about the size. The size of an African fat tail is a little bit smaller than a leopard gecko. Now you can see the difference here. This is a full grown leopard gecko. This is a juvenile or sub-adult African fat tail. So the African fat tail will never get as big as a leopard gecko is on average. On average, an African fat tail is gonna be between seven and nine inches and a leopard gecko between seven and 10 inches. But there are giants and super giant leopard geckos and I don't think that there are those morphs for African fat tails or at least I've never heard of them. So for that reason, and we'll treat this like a head to head, we'll go one a piece. Uh, so we're tied up at, at one. Number two, this goes hand in hand. Um, the difference between the enclosure size. There isn't one, so this is going to be very simple. A 20 gallon is what I would recommend for one uh, leopard gecko or one African fat tail, although you could probably house a pair. I, I house Littlefoot and her uh, clutchmate Sarah, her sister Sarah, in the same enclosure, which is a 20 gallon. So you could do that if you wanted to. African fat tail, same thing. Uh, of course, you know, never put two males together, never put a male and a female together full time. Um, I have care guides for both leopard gecko up here. The difference between the enclosures, between the two, uh, is very simple. Just the substrate might be a bit different because leopard geckos, they're going to need a drier type of environment and uh, African fat tail needs a little bit more humidity. Um, but uh, in the care guides, I talk all about the substrate that you'll need if you want to keep either one. So after two rounds, we're tied at two apiece. Next, we're going to talk about temperature, humidity, and lighting. And these things are somewhat similar. The big difference is humidity. Uh, now for temperature, uh, I go over that in the care guides, the, it's going to be very similar. They're not going to have too much of a difference in temperature. Maybe, you know, like five degree recommendation difference in hotspot type thing. Uh, but otherwise, very similar. The humidity is where things really change. Uh, for a leopard gecko, 30-40%. That's what I recommend for a leopard gecko. For an African fat cell gecko, you need to be 50-ish percent. Between 40 and 60 is generally what is recommended. Um, in her human hide, I mean, they both get human hides, but I always keep the back of her enclosure or one side of the African fat cell's enclosure a little bit more humid, right around 55-60%. So being that they're so similar, it would just kind of depend on the, you know, where you live for the humidity. So again, it's going to be a tie. This isn't going to end in a tie, by the way. Stick around, but for now it's three apiece. The diet between the two, identical, almost. It's almost completely identical. You're going to want uh, insects. They're both insectivores, so no vegetation, no flowers, no plants, no fruit, no nothing like that is necessary for them to eat. Uh, they're going to eat things like dubia roaches and crickets and mealworms and superworms appropriately sized. So I said that it's a similar, it's actually an identical diet. It's basically the exact same. So whether you want an uh, African fat tail or a leopard gecko, the food that you're going to need to keep and need to feed them is completely the same. So, so yeah, we're, we're still tied. It's going to be four apiece. So two more categories and we're going to have a winner in each one. These are really what separates African fat tails and leopard geckos behavior. Now, obviously this has actually been a pretty good you know, handling session with my African fat tail Diglett. She's not a full grown adult. She does get a little bit hissy sometimes when you pick her up out of her enclosure. She's not quite as boisterous. She's a little bit more shy where with uh, Sarah, 
with Littlefoot and her sister Sarah, they'll come right up to the glass. They think you've got food every time. I haven't got there with this African fat tail yet. She seems a little bit more nervous, a little bit more hissy, and I think in general, between the two species, you'll have not a hard time with either one taming them down, but leopard geckos seem to be a little bit more sociable and a little bit easier to kind of interact with on a regular basis. And one last thing we'll lump in there, the African fat tail honestly feels a little bit more fragile just because she's a little bit smaller. So I think we're gonna give this one to the leopard gecko, which means we're at five for the leopard gecko and four for the African fat tail. One more category left. Last category, price, availability, and morphs. And I think you guys know where this is going. Uh, in terms of African fat tails, they're harder to find. The morphs are more expensive and not as plentiful. So in general, it's just easier to find what you want in a leopard gecko or find one at all. If you go to a reptile expo, you'll see leopard geckos on every other table. With African fat tails, this was the only one at the last expo that I went to. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to find something like an African fat tail in comparison to a leopard gecko. Uh, yeah, morphs are more expensive just all around. I think that there's really no way that I could have the African fat tail even be in contention for this category. This category for sure definitely goes to the leopard gecko. So there you go. I mean, this is kind of a head to head where they're so similar. It's really up to you what you like best. But if I had to pick a winner, I would definitely say leopard gecko wins and the score ended up being four to six. But I mean, if you want an African fat tail, I don't think they're any harder to take care of at all. It just, you know, simple things like, you know, the price is a little bit different, the availability is different, the morphs are different, uh, and then it takes maybe a little bit more work, like the, you know, 5% more work to get them really handleable and tame them down. But otherwise, I mean, both are fantastic animals. Eh, it's hard to pick a winner in this one. And there you go. That is the major differences between African fat tails and leopard geckos. Geographic region, foot and eye structure, and their humidity levels. That's basically it. Those, otherwise they are so much the same, and then the next time someone screams at you on a forum, they're different, they're completely different, they're not completely different. I mean, they're different species, but at the end of the day, the care requirements are so darn similar. If you did research for one, change the humidity, and you've got you've done the research for the other one also. Now, I wanna mention something. Uh, if you like this video, of course, thumbs up, hit that like button, hit subscribe, I totally appreciate that. This week, we launched something new. We've got a Patreon page now. The support has been overwhelming. Thank you so much for those of you who have already subscribed. This is honestly, I can't believe how many of you have been so supportive. If you're a subscriber on this channel, I do my best to put out videos twice a week. That's not gonna stop. The quality is gonna continue to get better. But if you wanna see behind the scenes stuff, bang. That's how you sync up the audio when you do or like I've been kind of making a B-roll here of every time I mess up and can't say the words properly or... Next, we're gonna talk about le uh, I'm gonna give it off. You know, just kind of how to set things up if you want discounts on merch, if you want a personalized thank you video, and if you want a shout out like we're gonna do right now, join on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You know, your money goes to keeping animals like Littlefoot and Diglett a little bit nicer. Maybe I can like upgrade and buy more PVCs. And until April 25th, if you sign up for the all access or VIP memberships, I'm going to say your name like right now, Donnelly Lewis. Thank you very much for signing up and being an all access member. I really appreciate it. Uh, Isaiah Klinkscales. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jim Wickens. Thanks for giving me a cool last name. And also thanks for signing up for uh, the all access membership there. I say that you bought something with your discount, very heavy discount if you sign up before the 25th of April um, in the Jersey Herper. I see you on basically all the channels. You are very supportive. I really appreciate what you're doing. And Leslie Hart, I, fi I finished the video, came back in here to edit and saw you signed up, thanks. And of course, if you wanna become a VIP member, we're gonna put your name on the screen like this every single episode, but a special th shout out because you were the first ones. I really appreciate uh, what you're doing here. Amanda Goldfarb, Jacob Williamson, and Julie Bierling. Thank you so much. It honestly means the world to me. I know that it's, you know, not a ton of money, but at the same time, you know, I'm separating you from your money so that you can support the channel and you can support really cool animals like Diglett. It's pretty cool, right Diglett? Yeah, she's into it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you.